Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out some of these phone coolers that you can pick up on eBay and Amazon just to see if they work and can add extra performance to your Android device. Now both of the coolers we're going to be taking a look at in this video are powered coolers. These are actually known as Peltier coolers and we'll go over that in just a second. But basically, you add electricity to these, one side gets hot, one side gets really cold. But the two phones that we're going to be testing out today are the Galaxy S21 Plus powered by the Snapdragon 888 and the Redmi Note 9S powered by the Snapdragon 720. In this video, I'm going to be utilizing two different coolers, the first one being the cheapest of the bunch. You can find these on eBay and Amazon anywhere from $12 up to $30. There's lots of companies rebranding these, but I've tested it out and it does work. It's a powered Peltier cooler. And uh, real quick, let me show you how this works. So I have an infrared temperature sensor here. The cooler is not on at the moment, and we're at about 74 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But in order for these coolers to work correctly, you do need to add power. And I'm going to be using external power here from just a phone charger brick, 5 volts, 2 amps. And as soon as this comes on, it's going to go to work. So we've already dropped from 75 degrees Fahrenheit down to 68, and it's just going to keep dropping until you get to a certain degree and it just can't cool itself anymore. And this is known as the Peltier effect. We can call these thermoelectric coolers, or you can call it a Peltier cooler if you'd like to. So basically what's going on here is we have a heatsink on one side with a fan, and this is the cold side that we're pointing the gun out right now. The cold side absorbs the heat and pushes it out to the other side. Therefore, we need that heatsink on there and that fan to cool that heatsink off in order for this side to get colder. If you're interested in learning more about the Peltier effect, I will leave a link in the description to an awesome video by DroneBot Workshop. He goes over it in detail and he's using a much more powerful Peltier cooler. These are low powered when you consider what uh, you can really do with these. You can actually build ice on the side of high powered Peltier coolers, but this one here is only drawing 5 volts, 2 amps. Now the cooler I'm using right now is a more powerful cooler. It has a lot more space on the cold side, so it will cool your phone a lot more efficiently. This one is the Black Shark Fun Cooler 2. It also has that temperature sensor built in, but these are much more expensive, anywhere from $32 up to $50 that I've seen online. This one does get much colder than the cheaper one I'm using, and like I mentioned, we have more surface area here, so this will cool your phone much better than a cheaper Peltier cooler would. So what I've done is run some benchmarks without the cooler, and then we're going to run some with the cooler. But real quick, I just want to show you this in action. Here's the S21 Plus. I just got a little stand here. It's not being charged or anything like that. On screen, I'm running Ida64. And basically what you do is you clip the cooler to the back of the phone, make sure it's making contact, and uh, just give it a little while, and you'll see the temperatures on all of these sensors start to drop. Now this cooler isn't necessarily going to make your CPU faster than the stock clocks on the CPU itself, but what this can do is keep it at that manageable temperature so it doesn't thermal throttle when it gets too hot. And by thermal throttling, what I mean is when a CPU reaches a certain temperature, whether it's hardware or software controlled, it will lower the clock speed to keep that CPU cooler. It's not going to run at its maximum clock speed and go up to 200 degrees Celsius because it would definitely burn itself out. But since I've installed the cooler, we've already dropped 2 degrees on that CPU. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this. We'll let it run for about 3 minutes and just see how low it gets. And just from sitting for a couple minutes, we've dropped from 32 degrees Celsius down to 27 degrees Celsius. And the longer you go, the cooler this is going to get. It's not only cooling that CPU off, it's actually cooling the battery. So if you do play games while your phone's charging, you might notice it gets a lot hotter. While that battery's charging, it's actually heating up everything inside of the phone. Also, that CPU, it's adding heat to that CPU. Plus, when your battery gets hotter, a sensor tells it not to charge as fast, so you're going to be charging at slower speeds. It's going to keep that CPU at its maximum clock speed because it's going to be at a reasonable temperature. It's also going to keep that battery nice and cooled so it can actually charge at its maximum charge rate. But there is one major drawback to this whole thing. You have a giant fan and heatsink attached to the back of your phone, so it can make it cumbersome to hold. One of the main reasons I wanted to test these coolers out was when benchmarking my Galaxy S21 Plus, I noticed that I was getting some lower scores than other phones with that same CPU or the exact same phone. And I started looking at CPU temps and things like that. We only went up 4 degrees. It hit 40 degrees Celsius. But this is a low score given that this has that Snapdragon 888. And when it comes to the Note 9S with that Snapdragon 720, this is looking on par with everything else that I've tested and seen online. But I'm still going to give it a shot. So after a little bit of time with the coolers hooked up, I ran both of these benchmarks again. I actually ran a bunch of benchmarks on the S21 and I'll show you why in a second. 
but the Snapdragon 720 phone came out with basically the same score. This is definitely a lower powered ARM CPU, so it's not producing as much heat, but when it comes to the Snapdragon 888, they can get quite hot. And with the cooler installed, it jumped up from the original score of 660 something thousand to 770,000. That's an uptake of over 100,000 points, so uh, what I wanted to do was see if it was working the same way with other benchmarks, and lo and behold, it was. Geekbench 5, no cooler, single core, 625, with the cooler, 1107. Comes to Multi, 2677 with no cooler, 3371 with the cooler. When it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, this wasn't a dramatic jump, but it did help out a bit. And really, where this comes in is towards the bottom, it says your score versus this model. With no cooler, I beat out 11% of all other people who've run this benchmark. With the cooler, 97%. Wasn't a huge jump in the score there, but uh, it definitely helped out. But where this really helped out was that Antutu benchmark. And this is a much longer benchmark, so it does heat up more while you're running this. It tests basically everything with the phone. But yeah, as you can see, this definitely makes a huge difference, at least when it comes to benchmarks. Since I was getting a pretty decent performance boost with benchmarks, I figured I'd go ahead and test out some gaming with one of my favorite games, Genshin Impact. I've been up and running for 11 minutes with this game, our CPU is at 47 degrees Celsius, and I can't hit 60 FPS after about 8 minutes. It starts thermal throttling itself and just doesn't give me that performance out of the Snapdragon 888. From the settings, I'm at highest 60 FPS, and as you can see, we're around, you know, 43 to 47 FPS. But after letting the temperature on the phone stabilize, I attached the cooler and ran this same test. And here it is. So our CPU is no longer sitting at 47 degrees Celsius. We're around 35. I've been up and running for a little over 11 minutes, and we're at 60. Now there's going to be some dips here and there down to 56. That's just how it is with this game. But as you can see, it's running much better with the cooler than without the cooler. And it didn't make my phone faster. It just allowed that CPU to run at its maximum frequency. Now, I don't think that this is going to give you a dramatic boost on every single phone. Something like the S21, as you can see here, it would definitely help out with. Different manufacturers use different cooling systems, some are better than others, and it looks like the S21 just doesn't have a really nice cooling system for this Snapdragon 888. But I've been seeing these coolers pop up a lot lately in my Amazon and eBay feed, and some manufacturers are including these with phones. Uh, the one that I'm using here is actually specifically designed for the Black Shark 4, because they know during long gameplay periods that CPU is going to get hot and it needs some way to cool down to keep its maximum frequency so you can get the maximum performance out of your phone. So to answer the initial question, do these coolers really work? In my experience, and as we saw in this video, yes they do on certain devices. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you've tested one of these coolers out in the past, uh, let me know your experience. If you've run benchmarks with it or without, I'd actually like to know your experience. So let me know if it worked on your phone in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a couple links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.